In sections B and C, you learned about the raw materials used and the end products made in your factories. In this section, section D, you will consider how these materials and products need to be handled and stored. After completing this section, you will be able to Identify and describe the storage methods and facilities for raw and processed moe and wool in terms of your company's policies and procedures. Describe the care, handling and transporting procedures for raw and processed moe and wool in terms of your company's policies and procedures. And lastly, describe specific problems and preventative measures in relation to material storage and handling. Let's begin by reviewing how raw moe and wool should be handled and stored. When it comes to moe, the following guidelines should be followed. Raw moe packs must cover the contents completely so that the fibre does not come into contact with anything that could contaminate it. Each bale must be clearly marked. Each bale or container should only contain one category, grade or type of fibre. In your participant handbook, you will find guidelines on packaging masses per bale or container. There are important measures to keep in mind where wool is concerned. Remember that wool should be stored in jute or burlap bags that prevent contamination. Wool bags should be stored in a dry area. The bags should not be stored directly on a cement or dirt floor. As with Moe, only one category, grade or type of fibre must be packed in each bale or container. The container must be sewn up with blue glazed twine. The identification marks applied to each bale must be unique, clear and easy to read. Here are some examples of international markings warning to keep dry, not use hooks and keep away from heat. Handling and transporting of moe and wool needs to be done carefully by everyone involved in this at the factory. This is very important because the fleece should not be damaged when transported. Unwashed moe bales are transported by trucks to the processing plants to be washed. After washing, the moe is transported to the combing plants where it is carded and combed into long continuous lengths called slivers. These slivers are processed into bobbins and mechanically pressed into bales of between 180 to 250 kilograms. These bales are then transported to other processing sites such as dyeing plants or spinning mills. Transport can include forklifts, trucks or ships depending on the distance to be covered. Moe and wool of the same grade is pressed into bales. The bales are loaded onto trucks and taken to the warehouse for sale on auction. Moe and wool needs to be stored in rooms with the right temperature, humidity or moisture and ventilation conditions. A favourable travel temperature range is between 5 and 25 degrees Celsius. Wool easily absorbs water, therefore it must be protected from moisture during storage and transport. Moisture damaged bales have moe and wool that is discoloured, brittle and damaged with mould, mildew stains, mustiness and corrosion. This damaged moe and wool will need to be separated from the rest and re-scoured resulting in poorer quality and a reduced price for the moe and wool. Bales must be stored and transported at the right temperature. If the temperature is too hot, the moe and wool will be damaged. Wool grease is a wax or viscous brown liquid with a melting point of 34 degrees Celsius and which can contaminate other goods. So do not stow greasy wool together with scoured wool. Another issue to consider is that insects could infest wool before or during transportation. Contaminated wool will have to be fumigated. During storage, bales are particularly prone to attacks by moths, beetles, silverfish or termites. In the final section of this video, we will review the problems that can happen with handling, storage and transportation of bales of moe and wool. We will consider ways of preventing these problems from damaging the raw and processed products. The precautions that should be taken when storing raw moe and wool are Wool and moe should be stored in jute or burlap bags that prevent contamination, as plastic bags do not allow the fibers to breathe, which could result in rotting of the wool. Bags should be stored in a dry area and not directly on a cement or dirt floor. 
Never package wool and moe in wooden pallets or wooden boxes because the wood may splinter and damage the wool or moe. Greasy moe and wool should not be stowed near heat sources since the wool grease may run. Do not stow greasy wool together with scoured wool as greasy wool may contaminate the rest of the batch. Do not smoke in the storage area as greasy fibers can cause spontaneous combustion. Let's talk about how we should care for and preserve the end products made from moe and wool. Moe garments should be stored in a cool, dry place. Never store moe products in plastic. Do not spray perfume directly on the garment, especially if it is white. Do not keep knitted moe garments on hangers. Rather fold and store them on a shelf. Woolen clothing and blankets should be folded inside acid-free tissue paper and stored in airtight containers or vacuum bags. Wool coats should be thoroughly cleaned, dried, brushed and aired out before storing them in breathable, natural cotton coat bags to avoid a moth getting into them during summer. In this section, we have looked at how to store raw and processed moe and wool, the care that must be taken in handling and transporting moe and wool, and specific problems that can arise and what can be done to prevent damage to moe and wool. We have now reached the end of section D. Before you continue to the next section, complete tasks 8 and 9 in your workbooks. You will find the answers to the questions by reading through section D in your participant handbook. After completing tasks 8 and 9, you may continue to section E, which is all about how we can work ethically and sustainably in the moe and wool factory.